Not that long ago, Japanese 151 was the talk of YouTube. It was the talk of the internet. The reprint was crazy. Prices were crashing. Everyone was freaking out. There was multiple reprints. It was just like insane. There was rumors flying around on Reddit and all of this other stuff and Pokemon centers and this and that and shrink wrap and then they can buy boxes and all this stuff, right? And it's it's been a few months now and I just wanted to re- look at the Japanese 151 market. What did printing this set into the ground do? What did it do to it? Is it okay? Is it still investable? Are the cards, did the cards go to zero? Um, we're just going to talk about that. We're going to jump into it. All of that right now. A lot of um, hype and talk is about English 151 right now. So I just wanted to take a look back at the Japanese and just touch in on that. But before we go any further, I wanted to play a quick little game with you guys. We're going to look at all the singles from this uh, set, and I wanted to do something a little different. What do you guys think? Leave a comment right now. Don't skip ahead in the video. What do you think is the cheapest card from 151 currently? And I'll give you a hint that it's an actual Pokemon. It's not a, like a trainer card or something. So which Pokemon from the set? is the cheapest card in Japanese. I'd be interested to uh, see what you guys say, but we'll get to that in a second. So uh, let's just take a look at this real quick. This is price charting. Now, this is kind of like a uh, TCG player. Um, it does a few things that are different. And then maybe I'll use price charting a little bit more going forward because there's a, a few things that I like a little bit better um, about price charting. Now, first up, we're just going to take a look, obviously, at the booster box prices. Now, where they pull all their prices are from eBay sales. So, I really do like that. Uh, because you can go right here, you can be like, oh, okay, um, they're saying that one just sold uh, with shrink. And you click on it. And it's going to pull up the sale. Now, this one, obviously, was showing something different. That's eBay's fault. Here it is right so you can see the listing right there 7280 you see the price 7280 okay so there you go it's just proven sales right um so on ebay um you know because a lot of people go oh you can't go off tcg go off ebay well here you go right so a little bit after this set first came out i believe it actually came out in i think it was june of 2023 F feel free to correct me if i'm wrong there um but uh, right out of the gate, like $200 a box um, for Japanese boxes is really high. Uh, it, like 200 and then you can see it, it kind of started to come down and it, and it dipped down to 161 was the low after a few months, which is really expensive um, considering if you aren't familiar, Japanese boxes around like, I believe it's around 40-ish um, US dollars is the equivalent um for MSRP. So also a few things that you guys need to consider is that currently um, Japan is in a recession. I've, t I've touched on this before, but I'll just go through it real quickly. Um, they're in a recession. Their economy is not doing good. The yen to USD um, conversion is really bad um, for them. So it, it gives a, uh, it's unfortunate to see their like economy not doing well, but if it means that your dollar or whatever um, currency you have is going to go further um, with Japan. So as a buyer or investor, that's actually a really good thing for us right now. Um, so it's sad to see, but you know, that is what it is. I do think that that factored into the reprint, um, the re multiple reprints. And they printed this a ton because obviously the price, they were able to bring the price down from over $200 down to what it is now. And so one, they needed the money. Two, um, this was getting scalped like really bad. Now there's a difference between investing and scalping, right? Scalping is just buying everything out and just trying to flip it at a price. Investing is totally different. You're you're buying whatever boxes you can, but you're not going out to like your uh, you know your local Walmart and Target, buying everything off the shelf and then just immediately flipping it. That's scalping. That's what was happening in like COVID 2020. Anyways, we don't need to go into that too much. But um, after we dipped down to 161, we came up to, uh, yeah, I remember this time. 
217. I was going to say, I, I, I know there were some sales around 220, uh, above or below, right? And then uh, the free fall happened. Uh, the reprint got announced, it got rumored, right? And then we started coming down 206, 192. In April, we hit 118. Oh my gosh, we're finally under 100. People were saying, uh, buy, buy. If you guys are crazy, if you're not buying it under 100, buying it under 100. This is kind of where I was saying, uh, guys, MSRP is like 40. Let's wait till it gets a little closer. Um, so, and uh, we were able to get some of those prices that were pretty close um, off of eBay, actually. So, um, eBay was a little bit higher. And that makes sense because, you know, eBay has higher fees, 14%, blah, 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 you know. Anyway, so we saw the bottom right here um, on eBay, at least. And this is the average. So, keep in mind, um, there's sales above and below this price. 64.55. And then now we're seeing our first uptick, um, which is interesting to see. 67.72 uh, is the average price what they have on here. Now, that that was quite the uh, run for these boxes to go from 217 to 64. Um, what is good, and then I've said it before, is this is really great for collectors, um, people who want to just open the product. Uh, people who want to just get boxes, um, whether you're going to open them or not, um, they're affordable. And traditionally, Japanese boxes have always been way more affordable than English. That's just always how it's been. Um, you know, it was only somewhat recently that they became into high demand because of COVID and everything, um, just because of availability. Um, they've always been cheaper, and that's always how it's been. So, um, you know, don't expect these to, to go back up. to. It's going to take a long, long, long time for these to get back up to $200. Um, yeah, really long time. But um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think what we're seeing now is a healthy um, floor happening. And, you know, it is very possible that they could just keep printing more. It, they, they can do whatever they want. And they've proven that within the Japanese market, they'll print and they don't care. They need the money. And yeah, so um, it is possible that we could see even more reprints of this. But uh, it looks like that $65 mark was the floor. And we might see a steady, slow uptick over time from here. Um, this could be the bottom, but it is impossible to know for sure. Now, if we take a look at the singles um, from this set, you can see um, this is arranged from price from highest to lowest ungraded and you'll see that uh unlike english if you guys aren't familiar the charizard is not the most expensive card um there's two ahead of it the pikachu and gengar master ball and the master balls are one per box and there's a lot of them so that's why it can be very hard um to get these and i think that's kind of cool i really like that they did that and i wish they would have done that for english makes um master setting way harder if you're including the master balls for the master set but um it gave uh, another level of rarity to these cards um that i think is really cool so let's just um pull up some of these charts right now so you guys saw how much the boxes dipped um but let's take a look at what the most expensive card did so coming out of the gate 200 it was at whoo 370 and back up to 380 and then reprint announced about in here 360 and it dipped down to 167 and now it's about up to 180 which is below where it came out the gate at um but once again still you what we're seeing is um a rebound off of june so uh this is this is showing to me um well one this is still an expensive card there's no doubt um but this is showing some some health this is a healthy uh, bounce back. These uh, the singles are not just in free fall, okay? So, and we know that this is one of the most popular sets ever, right? So, um, that doesn't that's not really uh, of a surprise to me. Something else that we can take a look at here on price charting uh, that I think is cool is you can click this. Oops. Um, is we can look at um. PSA uh, 10 prices on here as well. You know, we got 
um, nine tens, right? We can see all the all the prices here as well. Um, in addition, if you wanted to just ungraded, you know, you can see them all and have the links to eBay. So um, that is nice there. Next up, the second most expensive card, the Gengar. Now this one is a little different because the Pikachu was uh, lower than where it came out the gate. Now the Gengar came out at like 80 bucks, climbed all the way up to around 240, and it's sitting at 140, well above where it came out the gate at. So once again, uh, very popular Pokemon, but showing some strength here with the uh, the Gengar Master Ball. So that is very interesting. Um, also, PSA 10 here, you can see what it did. Um, 478 it peaked at, and 234 currently for a PSA 10. So that, yeah. And then also, too, I mean, you guys can, like, we can really look at the chart here, right? See this? So we can have 9, 10s, and raw. So, um it's just something cool to play with uh, that I do like that they have on here. And yeah, you can see, so like the nine price actually was lower than raw, now just surpassed. So that's interesting. All right, now next up, the card that probably most of you guys uh, wanted, want to uh, take a look at, get the Charizard. Now, this is a pretty steady decline on here, 162 out of the gate up to 184, steadily declining and still declining. Right, so this card has not seen its rebound yet, and you know that uh, maybe this is the low. We don't know yet. So this is a little different than the Master Balls. Not it, not as rare as the Master Balls, obviously. And you know, if we want to, we'll pull up the PSA 10 chart here. Uh, pretty much the same thing for the most part, but I mean, much bigger of a decline from eight uh, hundred. Uh, down to 145 so um, if you are looking at picking up uh, any of these cards in Japanese might be a really good time uh, currently as this is very affordable um, and it's not uh, it's not a ton more affordable than the English but it is definitely more affordable than the English so if you wanted to pick up a pair pick up the English and the Japanese um, it's a good time to do so now this is something that um, I don't personally understand. It's a Japanese thing, the whole waifu thing, but this is one of the more expensive cards. You know, whatever whatever they're into. Came out the gate at 571, which is wild to me. Absolutely wild. I don't get it. Um, but yeah, no, this same thing. This, we might not have seen the bottom on these yet, potentially, because we have not seen these rebound yet. 65 down to 62. So... And, uh, you know, we're seeing some sales right here. Like, this one was $58. This was for a near mint copy. So, um, yeah, the, the uh, singles might be lagging a little bit behind um, the booster boxes. If the booster boxes have leveled out and they're on their way up, sometimes the singles take a while. You also got to understand that a lot of people are opening this product. And that's going to flood the market with singles all the time so um with singles it can be a race to the bottom um people will just list theirs lower to make a sale you know it's pretty common so um next up now the mew in japanese is not a promo card um you actually have to pull it so it gives it a lot more value um than what we got for english but 210 out of the gate very similar steady decline here um and you know, we still don't know what the bottom is on this guy. Um, so, currently, when we start to take a look at this stuff, that leads me to believe that when I think about this, if you're looking at picking up Japanese 151 singles, you might want to hold off unless you're looking at the Master Balls. Because those seem to have already hit their bottom, potentially, and that these singles could be falling a little bit further. It's just a little bit more of a delayed effect. Um, but yeah, so you are seeing... Yeah, I mean, you guys can see the sales here. Um, feel free to check out price charting if you want. We'll pull up the 10. We'll see what this card's been doing in the 10 as well. Um, pretty same thing. Dude. Okay, that's wild. I didn't uh, expect to see a 1,000 out the gate for a Mew and a 10, but now 
97 and a 10. So, uh, interesting there. Next up, uh, we're, this is my favorite card from the set. I think the best artwork, still severely undervalued, both English and Japanese, in my opinion. Now, came out at just 100 bucks, so that's... See, this is kind of where I want the English card to be, if I'm being honest. Or at least around 80. That's kind of where I want it to be valued at. Because I think it deserves that, personally. But anyways. Um, slow decline. Same thing as everything else, seems. Right? 37 to 34 now. So, have we hit the bottom? We don't know. So, that's kind of going to do it for... Um, I mean, we can take a look at a few more here. Um, just to pull up, um, let me just click out a few of these tabs real quick, and then uh, we'll go, we'll check out the Mewtwo Master Ball, the Dragonite Master Ball, and the Magikarp. These are actually above the Zapdos, and then actually, let's touch on real quickly just a few more. Okay, so the Mewtwo Master Ball, we'll see if it's following the Master Ball trend, and it technically is. It bottomed in June and is up a little bit here in July, so that is interesting. And the Dragonite, um, the Dragonite technically is down a little bit from June um, on the Master Ball. And the Magikarp is on a decline still. So um, that is not the Master Ball rule of where everything is at right now. So um, keep that in mind. The Blastoise came out at 60. Um, beautiful looking card. And this one almost seems like it's leveling out. Um, not much of a decline from June to July. I don't know how much lower this card can go. Um, it's already it's already pretty affordable. And then the Venusaur, um, still on the decline as well. This is looking like this might drop into the 20s, which, high 20s. Um, so yeah. All right, now let's uh, touch on, so you can see the most expensive cards here, right? What did you guys say was the least expensive the cheapest card. I'm going to show you guys right here with one confirmed sale on eBay. Here we go. Ponyta, number 77. Uh, looks like there was at least one sale for 50 cents for a long time. And then we had a sale for 6 cents. Which is wild because on eBay, I'm pretty sure whoever selling that lost money. <laughs> but uh, 6 cents, Ponyta is the cheapest. And... If I, I would not have guessed that it was a Pokemon first off, and I wouldn't have guessed that it was Ponyta. Um, so yeah, that's uh, when you go over here and you search by ungraded and you flip the price around. Um, the cheapest cards here, we'll just go over this just for fun at the end of the video here. Ponyta, Goldeen, uh, Dugong. I thought something like this, like the Dome Fossil or the Amber or something like that, right? You can see um, these are the cheapest. And then they go up to around a dollar pretty quickly. But yeah, six cents for Ponyta. Um, so that is going to do it for this one, guys. I just wanted to touch on Japanese 151. Kind of just do a little update on where it's at. Uh, on the singles, on the boxes. Um, I still think that um, it is still a good investment for long term. It's just going to take a long time. And that keep in mind that when you're picking up these boxes, that they can print more. They've proven um, that at least as far as the Japanese space goes, that they will print what they want when they want. So don't underestimate that or the fact that they, you know, are going to take the yen. If they can just keep printing and people keep buying, um, they will print to demand. So, um, yeah, it's, it's honestly, though, it's a fun time to have these cards be affordable because I like ripping the Japanese 151. I like opening the cards. So that's where I'm at. I'm at, let's enjoy it. Let's rip some packs. Um, yeah, I'm still working on my English master set, but I would love to do a Japanese master set and include the master balls, but whew, that gets a little, starts to get a little pricey. So um, that's going to do it for this one, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. And remember, it was never a phase.